to be. Amen. And all the fathers, happy Mother's Day to you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Mother's Day is both mother and father. Though they separate it, but it's yeah. both mother and father. Exactly. So happy Mother's Day to women and men. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So briefly, with a few minutes we have, I want to quickly, I'm going to rush it because I don't want us to spend too much time. I want to quickly talk about the testimony of the living and powerful word of God. Amen. The testimony of the living and the powerful word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 4, Hebrew 4, 12. The Bible says, can you put it in the Amplified for me, please? I read it from my Bible. The Bible says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a designer of the thought and the intent of the heart. For the word that God speaks is alive. Somebody say, the word that God speaks is alive. Say the word that God speaks is alive. Hallelujah. Amen. The word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of life, soul, and the, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest part of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the word of God. Amen. Amen. That is how powerful the word of God is. That is how alive the word of God is. Somebody say the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. Say the word of God is powerful. The word of God is powerful. Say the word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. The word of God is powerful. The word of God. The word of God is operative. The word of God is active. The word of God is effective. The word of God is sharp. The word of God is sharp. Hallelujah. Some people will say it's like two-edged sword. Uh -uh. It's sharper than two-edged sword. The word of God penetrates. It's because of the word of God that has penetrated our hearts. That's why we are sitting down here today. Yes. Hallelujah. Because the word of God has penetrated our hearts. Praise the Lord. The Bible said in John 1.1, 1, 1, it said in the beginning was the word. Without the word there was no beginning. Amen. In the beginning was the word. John 1.1. 1, 1. And the word was with God. And the word, that word was God. Mm. Amen. So we see that the word is a person. Yes. Somebody say the word is a person. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. The word is a person. It's alive. It's living. And it's powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus said in John chapter 6, 63, He said there's words that I speak to you. They are spirits and they are life. Amen. It is the spirit that quicken it. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Somebody say the word of God is life. The word of God in me is life. Hallelujah. We have the word of God that is life. It's powerful. Praise the Lord. It's sharp. Amen. Because the word of God is so alive. Because the word of God is so sharp. Because it's so active. Because it's so powerful. That is why the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1. That God said, let there be. And there was. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is so powerful. Anything the word says come into existence. Praise the Lord. He said in Genesis 1. God said, let there be light, and there was. The Bible didn't say God created light. It didn't say God made it. God spoke it. Hallelujah. 
Amen. God spoke the word. The word is living. The word is alive. The word is sharp. The word is active. Praise the Lord. The word of God is effective. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of God is so powerful that God said in Psalm 138, verse, I think it's verse 2, the Bible said that he has magnified his word above his name. That is how powerful the word of God is. Say the testimony of the living and the powerful word of God. Say that. The testimony of the living and the powerful word of God. He said, I will worship towards the holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. God magnified his word above his name. That is how powerful the word of God is. And the Bible tells us that the word of God is a person that was with God in the beginning. That was God. Amen. I cannot separate you from your word, can I? I can't separate you from your word, can I? So God cannot be separated from his word. God and his word is one. You and your word, you are one. So when you say something, you say, take my word for it. Why? Because you are the one saying it. So God is saying to somebody today, take my word for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is saying to somebody today, take my word for it. Amen. You have to say, I will take it, I Lord. Will take it, Lord. Hallelujah. God and his word cannot be separated. He has magnified his word above his name. The word of God, all that God is, all that God is, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is embodied in Jesus Christ. Jesus, the Bible says, is the express image of the Father. Praise the Lord. It said to us in Colossians chapter 2, I think it's 9 and 10. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. The Bible says, for in him dwelleth all the fullness. Put it in the amplified version, please. For in him, the all fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. In Jesus, go back to the King James. In Jesus dwells the fullness of God, all that God is. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, in him dwelleth. All the fullness of the Godhead. The Godhead is the Trinity. The three in one that we sang. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said in verse 10. And you are complete in him. Amen. Somebody say I'm complete in him. I am complete. Say I am complete in him. I am complete in God the Father. I am complete in God the Son. I am complete in God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Which is the head of all principality and powers. Jesus is the head of all principality and power. And we, we are complete in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word is so powerful and alive and active that the scripture says in Hebrew chapter 1 verse 3, it says all things you know, all things are held together by the word of his power. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. It is by the word of his power that all things is held yes. up. See, all what we are hearing, let's forget about that. It is by the word of God the universe is head. He upholds all things by the words of his power. It's the word of God that is upholding the universe. Amen. If God decides to withdraw his word today, all the naysayers and the gainsayers, they will be gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All the naysayers and all that are against him, they will be gone. If God decides today to switch off to take his word, 
but he doesn't want to. He said, I will not destroy it again because of man. That is why man is just enjoying doing whatever they like. Because God swore. He said, I will not destroy the earth again because of man. So that is why men are still doing what they like. They don't acknowledge God, but God is still looking at them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, by his word, all things are held in place. We are serving a powerful, a living Hallelujah. God. We are serving Amen. a good God. Amen. Amen. I don't think it's making sense to you. It's making sense to some of us. Praise the Lord. But some of us, it will make sense to you later. Amen. Some of us, as you are going home, it will make sense to you. And some of us, even while you are at home, it will make sense to you. Praise the Lord. That God upholds all things by the word of his power. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of God is so powerful. God exalted his word above his name. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Philippians 2 5. He said, let nothing be done. Okay. Let this might be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. 7. He taught it not robbery to be equal with God. But he was in the form of God. If I say, Olume say is in the form of Jerry. Is it not the same thing I'm talking about? Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in likeness of man. That is Jesus coming down to our level. Mm. Coming down to be a man. God leaving his throne and coming down to be man like us. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He made himself of no reputation. He, he was born in a manger. He was a king, but he was born in a manger. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 8. So because Jesus made himself of no reputation, because he came as a servant, because he came to fulfill the plan of the Father, the Bible says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Amen. Even the death of the cross. He became obedient. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God became obedient. Amen. The word of God became obedient. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 9. It says, wherefore. Somebody say, wherefore. wherefore. Because of this. Mashitaya if Jesus did not obey himself, if, did not, if he did not obey, we would not be here today. Like we read in our Matthew chapter, if Jesus has yielded to the devil, just like Eve and Adam, we will not be sitting down here today. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, thank God he didn't. Thank you, Lord. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He obeyed. And that is why you and I, we are supposed to be obedient to death. Amen. That is why we are supposed to be obedient to death. Hallelujah. Amen. Wherefore, because of this, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Hallelujah. The word of God, God exalted him above every name. Verse 10. He says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things on earth and of things under the earth. Hallelujah. Everything has been granted unto Glory him. To Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. He said that at the name of Jesus, that is why at the name of Jesus, when you say Satan flee, he will flee. When you say at the name of Jesus, sickness go, it will go. Yeah. When you say at the name of Jesus, this be done, it will be done. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Mm. The knees that refuse to bow today, they will still bow. Mm. So it is better to just bow now and be obedient. Mm. Because whether 
we like it or not. Even Satan himself, the Bible says at the end, he will come about to Jesus. He will say, Nazarene. Mm. <laughs> there was a movie we, we saw. At the end of all the show, you know, Satan likes to put on show. Mm. Everything we are saying now is just a show. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But he forgot that the biggest show <laughs> is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. He's just putting on a show. At the end, he still come to bow. Mm. Because every knee mm. should bow to, to Jesus in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. It does not matter what knee they will bow. Hallelujah. They will all bow to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said they will all bow to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. The testimony of his word. Amen. The testimony of his word. The word is powerful. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. Nobody prosper outside the word of God. Jesus said, without me, you will do nothing. And indeed, without him. Some people may think that they are prospering without Jesus, but it's a lie. Nobody prosper without Jesus. People might think they are prospering now, but their prosperity is limited. Praise the Lord. Because prosperity is not money. Prosperity is not money. Prosperity is not wealth. It's not possession. If it was, there would not be void in their hearts. Remember the rich man that came to Jesus? He said, what will I do? He was rich. If prosperity was, was wealth, he wouldn't have come to Jesus and asked him, what do I do to be saved? Because he was already rich. But he came with his riches to Jesus. He said, what do I do to be saved? And Jesus said, go and sell your possession. Come and follow me. The Bible said he was angry. Praise the Lord. Well, a lot of people will say, ah, Jesus don't like riches. Uh -uh, that is a lie. Jesus, he, he loves riches. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He's not poor. Praise the Lord. Because without money, we can't preach the gospel far. Amen. But he doesn't want us to rely on riches. He does not want wealth to possess us. He wants us to possess wealth. Amen. And not wealth possessing us. That is why our Bible study today, in that book that we read in, in Matthew, is it chapter 6 or 7? He said, where your heart is, that is where your treasure is. And he talks about the righteous moment. He said, you cannot serve two masters. So anyone serving money, wealth, you cannot serve God. He said, you can't serve two masters. You either serve one and forget the other, or, or you serve the other and forget the one. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are we getting it? Yes. Are we getting it? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't worry, I'm rounding up. I, I know I'm rushed, so it's good. I'm rounding up now. I just want to quickly tell us a story of a man. Amen. In the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. We know the story of Lazarus in John chapter 11. The Bible talks to us about Lazarus. It said Lazarus was sick and they went to call Jesus. And as they went to call Jesus... Jesus said, okay, Lazarus, he said to his disciples, he said, um, we are going because Lazarus is asleep. And the disciples said, if he's asleep, he will wake up now. Why do we have to go? Jesus said, since you people lack understanding, I will say plainly to you, Lazarus is dead. Amen. Amen. That is how sometimes we lack understanding when God is speaking. Sometimes God is speaking his word to us. And God expects us by now to understand what he's saying. But we are still, we are still saying plainly. And God is speaking to us spiritually. And he wants us to pick up the spiritual antenna. But we are still in the physical realm. Trying to say, Lord, I'm trying to understand what you are saying. Praise the Lord. God speaks to us every day. The word of God comes to us every day. But it's just, it just depends on the position that we are in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It depends on the position that we are in. He said, Lazarus is sleeping. They didn't understand. He said, okay, I'll tell you, he's dead. But we are going to see him. So the Bible said, Jesus waited four days before he went. And when he got there, 
Martha said, oh dear Martha, we have a lot of martyrs in the body of Christ. God help us. Amen. Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus said, don't worry, he will rise. But Jesus was talking about now. Martha was talking about, I know, in the resurrection. Jesus said, no, 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 I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. The word of God is the resurrection and the life. Amen. Martha still didn't get it. She just shook her head. That is how some of us shook our head when we hear the word of God, but we still didn't get it. Amen. But you will get it. Amen. I said you will get it. Amen. Hallelujah. And then Jesus came. So when he came, after he said all that to Martha, the Bible said he, he went. And when he gets, I don't want to go into all, but in verse 34, the Bible says, and he said, where have you laid him? Jesus said, where have you laid him? And then they said, okay, come and see. They took him there. In verse 39, Jesus said, take away the stone. They showed him where he was laid. And he said, take away the stone. Hallelujah. Verse 38, he says, and then Jesus came groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lie against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for days. Who cares how many days? Who cares how many days? The word is present. Amen. The Bible said in Psalm 107, he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from all their distresses, from all their diseases, from all their pain, from all their death, from all their sicknesses. Who cares how many days is dead? Who cares how many days your situation is dead? Who cares how many days your child is dead? Who cares how many days your money is gone? Who cares? As long as Jesus is present. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As long as Jesus is present. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, no, Lord. He said, no, Lord. By this time, he is sleeping. Hallelujah. He's dead. He's smelling. Jesus said, oh, matter, matter. We have a lot of matters, but God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said to Martha, I said, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Amen. Did I not say that to you? How many times has the word of God come to you? How many times has the word of God come to us? He said, did I not tell you if you believe? All we need to do is believe. Amen. 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 The first step is that the word is present. The second step is that the stone be taken away. But the stone was not taken away because there was an interruption. I said anything that is interrupting whatever situation in your life from going away, they will be taken off in Jesus name. Amen. The stone did not, the stone was not rolled away immediately because there was an interruption and God always wants to take away any doubt or disbelief. Martha came. He said, no Lord, he's smelling. Jesus said, I told you to believe. So the, the second step was the believing. Mm -hmm. Because even after Jesus said, take away the stone, the stone was not taken away. Mm -hmm. Without believing, nothing is done. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we must believe. Mm -hmm. And after the believing, after Jesus settled that with matter, the next verse, in verse, in verse uh, 41, the Bible says, then they took away the stone mm -hmm. from the place where the dead man was lying. Mm -hmm. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. He didn't, he, he didn't bind and loose. He said, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of these people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Hallelujah. Amen. That they may believe that you sent me. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. 
Do you know that Jesus does not care about any stench in your life? Whatever stench is in your life, Jesus doesn't care about it. He doesn't care about our past. He cares about your future. Amen. Amen. He cares about our destiny. He does not care about our situation and our circumstances. He does not care about what stench is going around you. All he cares about is fulfilling the destiny that God has proposed for each and every one of Amen. us. Matter say he's smelly. Jesus said, who cares? Who cares about the stench? Mm. Hallelujah. Who cares whether he's smelling? Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory he said, Father, I thank you because you always hear me. But yes. because of these people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then the Bible said, and then he cried out with a loud voice. He said, Lazarus. Hallelujah. He said, Lazarus. The Bible didn't say. He, he said he cried with a loud voice. He said, Lazarus, come forth. I said, whatever thing that is dead in your life is coming forth today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that is dead in your life mm. is coming out today. Amen. Whatever it is, whatever stone, whether stone of frustration, stone of doubt and unbelief, stone of discouragement, stone of anger and forgive unforgiveness, whatever stone that has held you bound or held you down, mm. they will come out today Amen. by the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They are coming out. Amen. You want to rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to stand up on your feet. You want to begin to cry. The Bible said Jesus cried. He said Lazarus come forth. So you want to begin to cry. Begin to call forth whatever you know. I don't know what it is in your life. I only know about myself. But you know what is in your life. That you need to come forth. You, need, you know what is in. There are things that God is in us. That need to come forth that are dead. Or that are lying stagnant. That the father wants to come back to life. So we want to begin to cry out today. And say Lord. By the power. In the authority in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is. That is dead. In my life. Whatever it is that is holding me back. Oh today. According to the word of the Lord, that I am coming forth, I am coming out in the name of Jesus. I am coming out of that situation, I am coming out of that circumstances, I am coming out of that stage in the mighty name of Jesus. I am coming out of that grave, I am coming out in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Finally, you know, after Jesus called him out, hmm, the Bible said, and he who died came out bound, hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, lose him and let him go. Even though you have come out, though you have accepted Jesus into your life, but your hands and your feet are still bound. Ah, tonight, I said tonight, whatever area your hands and your feet are still bound, they are coming loose. In the name of Jesus, you are born again. You are a child of God. You have accepted Christ into your life, but there are still areas in your life that needs deliverance. Yes. There are still areas in your lives that needs to be set loose. Mm. There are areas in your life that Hallelujah. you need freedom. Hallelujah. 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 You are in the church. You are in the house of God. But you, there is still something. Ah, uh, Today, that something is coming out. Yeah. That something is going to be set loose. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus said, lose him. And let him go. You want to begin to decree tonight. You want to begin to declare. Begin to decree and declare. Whatever it is you think is bounding you. Or is holding you back. Or injuring you from moving forward. Lazarus came out of the grave. But he was still bound. So Lord. Whatever it is. Lord whatever it is that is 
hindering me from moving forward. Whatever is holding me back by the authority in the name of Jesus, I set myself loose. I set myself loose by the word of Jesus. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I set myself loose from every boundness, from every bondage, from every hindrance. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor and adore you. Father, we give you praise. We thank you, precious Lord. Father, we glorify your name. We exalt your holy name. We exalt your holy name. Father, I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. I give you all the adoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. I give you praise. I give you praise. You must believe that whatever it's in you that is holding you bound must go. You must believe that it is going. And you must believe that it will be gone. Hallelujah. Because if you don't believe, it will not happen. I can stand here and decree and declare the word of God. But you have to believe it. Hallelujah. And if you believe it, you are coming back here with a testimony. I said you are coming back with a testimony. You are coming back with a testimony. Because you are being set loose. Because you are being set loose. From whatever is injuring you. From whatever has been limiting you. Before this very moment. Anything that has been limiting you from getting closer to Jesus. Whatever has been limiting you from going forward in God, today they are taken away in the mighty name of Jesus. And we are all going forward in Jesus' name. We are marching forward in Jesus' name. By the power of his word, in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of his resurrection and life, in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that divine lives shall be evoked by the resurrection power. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. And I decree upon you today Amen. that your life shall be invoked Amen. by the resurrection power Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare it over your life today. The Bible says in Romans 8:11 that if that same spirit that raises Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit shall quicken your mortal body, Amen. shall give life to your mortal body. Amen. I decree that the spirit of God in you will vitalize your mortal body. Amen. The spirit of God in you will give life to your mortal body. Amen. The spirit of God in you will quicken your mortal body. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. every area of your life shall be invoked Amen. by the resurrection power Amen. of the Lord. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, precious Thank Father. You, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Thank we worship and honor and adore you. Be thou exalted. Be thou glorified. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus.